is the Bordis and Bordis Friday Night Rivals. The sun is shining at Wheeling Island Stadium on a great matchup ahead between the St. Clairsville Red Devils and the Wheeling Park Patriots. Vera. Oh, picked uh -huh. off by Eric Brothers I Jr. Think. We've got ourselves a pick six for number six. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our black and gold training camp special. I'm Jack Hillgrove. And I'm Bill Phillips, and over the next half hour, we're going to take a look at the key headlines during the early part of the Pittsburgh Steelers training camp before game one of the preseason against the Seattle Seahawks. And as you look behind us out in front of Acrisure Stadium, you can see the silhouette of Ben Roethlisberger in the window there. And the biggest storyline heading into training camp for the Steelers is who's going to take over for Ben Roethlisberger. Live from Acrisure Stadium, the site of the 105th backyard brawl between Pitt and West Virginia on the home field of the Pitt Panthers and out come the West Virginia Mountaineers. If you couldn't hear by the welcoming party of the Pitt student section that has been in their seats for the last two hours. We'll send it out to Rob and Columbus. Hey Rob. Two tradition rich programs with lots of fans in the Ohio Valley. Ohio State ranked number two in the nation hosting number five Notre Dame. This is the first time the Buckeyes have been involved in a season opening matchup that involves a pair of top five teams. Well, Chuck Noll Field, where the Steelers normally practice at St. Vincent College, is behind me, but tonight they leave campus and head to Latrobe Memorial Stadium for their annual Friday Night Lights practice. And when asked about it yesterday, head coach Mike Tomlin said that the affection for football lovers and Friday Night Lights goes hand in hand. Hello from Morgantown, where the West Virginia Mountaineers pick up a much-needed Big 12 victory, their first conference win of the season, 43-40 over 23rd-ranked Baylor on Thursday night. We had a backyard brawl on the basketball court in Pittsburgh tonight. Our Jack Kilgrove, he was courtside for tonight's action at the Peterson Event Center and is live right now with the highlights. Hey there, Jack. Hey there, Rob. Good evening to you and good evening, everybody. You know, these two teams have met on the hardwood coming into tonight 189 times. West Virginia won 100 of those. And on their quest for win 101, those points, they started coming quite literally right from the jump. The Wheeling Nailers down two games to none in this Central Divisional Final. Games three, four, and five come home to Wheeling in West Banco Arena, starting with game three on Tuesday. Reporting in Toledo with the Wheeling Nailers, I'm Jack Hillgrove for News 9 Sports. This is the Bordis and Bordis Friday Night Rivals. Another fumble potentially? Yes, oh. there it is. Cam Jones Cam ends Jones. up with it. The big fella, the 10, the 5, into the end zone. A big guy <laughs> touchdown to make it 14 nothing. We're high. Cam Jones says, I got the football. I don't think anybody else realized he had the football. Before you knew it, he's in the end zone. The ball at the 35-yard line. We think to give the Watkins. We're going to put it in the air. Hildebrand going deep. Wide open. Braden McGreef. Touchdown, Maroon Knights. Good evening and welcome inside a packed Carl Hamill Fieldhouse on the campus of Weir High School. Set for the Weirton City Championship on the Bordis of Bordis TV Ohio Valley, Rob Metzger along with Rich Donnelly. And if the atmosphere shows us anything, we could be in for a treat. Riders on a run, lead by seven. Bone double teamed in the post. Kick back out. Arlea for three. Good. Nope. Santino Arlea cuts it to four. Watch him help in and step in on dribble drives. You see that? Yes. You know, they're doing a great job on dribble drives. Great Nothing you can do about that and, one, and, and, and that is something right there there's not much you can do about, right? I mean, that's just... That, that's a great shot. That's great offense. Build out. Two-point lead. 1-10 to go. Woods with it. Over to Doherty. Three in the air. It's good. Parks in front by one. This is the WVU Medicine Wheeling Hospital High School Grand Slam. Rothacker to center. Base hit. And it's going to roll. One runs in. Two runs are in. A third will score. Rothacker, he'll round second. 
And he's going to head to third. A bases clearing base hit for Hunter Rothbacker. It's 4 nothing. This is the Bordis and Bordis WTOV9 High School Football Awards Show. Good evening, I'm Rob Metzger, and welcome to Wheeling Island Hotel Casino Racetrack for the 17th annual Bordis and Bordis WTOV9 High School Football Awards Show live on Fox 9 and across the web as well at WTOV9.com. Big 22 Player of the Year is Brett Phillips, Wheeling Park quarterback. Let's uh, talk about this, Brett. First off, what does it mean when you look at all those guys that were finalists and everyone here in this room, what does it mean to be holding that trophy? Uh, it just means a lot. Um, I'm extremely blessed. You know, all these guys on stage here are amazing athletes, amazing at what they do, and everybody out there, too. Everyone's just so talented, and it's, it's a great group of guys around here. And I this is Weirton Medical Center Sports Friday. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Weirton Medical Center Sports Friday. I'm Bill Phillips. Rob Metzger is on the call of that one and joins us with all the highlights. Rob, take it away. Thanks, Bill. Despite dropping four of its last five, Harrison Central still 13th in Division 5, Region 17. Top 16 will get in. The Huskies looking to solidify their chances with a win at Creek tonight. And Battle in Barnesville. Jack Hillgrove joins us. He's standing by live in the Belmont Content Center. Jack, take it away. Bill, thanks and good evening, everybody. Barnesville 8-0 for the first time since 2006, hosting Shenandoah tonight in a series where they lead all time 24-11. News 9's Ed DiOrio brings us those highlights, Ed. Thanks, Bill. 5-3 Toronto trying for a second straight win, hosting Pima Tuning Valley. Let's get into it. I'm at Union Local High School tonight, the site of one of the girls' 4A semifinal matchups between the Jets and Harrison Central. The OVAC has been the epicenter of high school athletics in the Ohio Valley since 1943, but tonight they're going to do something they've never done before. Gina Hicks, McLean Maraud, and Megan Scott have been basketball officials for several years, but never together during the same game. But in tonight's 4A semifinal between Union Local and Harrison Central, they will. And it will be the first time ever in the OVAC that three women will officiate together in a varsity basketball game. For the OVAC, it's a milestone. It's, for a long time, it took five, six, seven, eight years to get one varsity game. And I know that uh, at least two of these three girls have worked over 20 varsity games. Maraud and Scott got to work together last Wednesday at Martin's Ferry and their passion for officiating was on full display. Um, with us being the first official female crew, uh, I'm excited to get out there and see what our crew definitely has to offer. It's great to be a part of and it's great for younger uh, females to look up to us. Ironically for Hicks, this will be her second milestone as she was a part of the first OVAC umpiring crew with three women last spring. 15 years ago when I was playing in the OVAC, there were no female officials at all. And now today we're going to be able to have a, an all-female crew. I Words can't explain how honored and excited I am for this. Only 25% of all high school officials in the country are women. Minkemeyer notes how relentlessly the conference has been trying to recruit new officials and is proud of the successes the three of these women have on the floor. We've been very fortunate to have uh, five actually young ladies who've taken up officiating and three of them have really risen to the top. And all three of them working the game tonight want to let any young person know, male or female, that if you're skeptical on getting into officiating, don't be. Get out there, do it. It's fun. I would definitely take the chance, try it out. Um, you won't be disappointed. You know, female officials are an up and coming thing everywhere, anywhere, um, but we're not done yet. Live from Union Local, I'm Jack Hillgrove for News 9, live at 5. From the Weirton Medical Center Sports Desk, Rob Metzger, now with News 9 Sports. Good evening. Quick turnaround for the Wheeling Nailers trying to even up the playoff series in Toledo after losing last night, game one. Wheeling without Cam Hossinger and Josh Maniscalco. However, Matt Alfaro returned from the AHL. And Alfaro made an impact early for Derek Army's squad. Tyler Drevich feeds it in, and Alfaro is there in front for the goal. It's 1 0 early. Nailers in front. LP Guindon back in net after getting pulled early last night. Huge first period for him. He covers up the puck. One nothing after one period. Second period, while I even it up, about five minutes in on the power play, former nailer Brandon Hawkins 
Then a tough stretch later in the period. This goal is going to be reviewed for possible goaltender interference. However, it was not reversed. It's 2-1 to one Toledo. Soon after on the power play, Cam Clark going to make it a 3-1 walleye lead. They get three goals in a four-minute span to take control. 5-2 your final. Jack Kilgrove wraps it up from Toledo. Well, after almost two full periods of hockey in Game 2, it looked like the Wheeling Nailers were ready to smash the reset button after last night's Game 1 loss. But with five minutes left in the second period tonight, Toledo took the lead, went up two, then three, and then ended up winning the game 5-2. to two. Here's head coach Derek Army on his thoughts on the turning point of the game. The second goal um, in any other league, that's not a goal. It's, that's goal interference. And then you call a couple penalties, and you know that puts you on your heels. And um, you give this team a chance, and they score on the power play. They're, they're lethal like that. So um, from us, I think what, what standpoint changed was a little bit for the first time, we started to feel a little uh, you know, like it was us versus everyone um, in, that, in that mindset. And unfortunately, we weren't just able to respond and hold them off. The Wheeling Nailers down two games to none in this Central Divisional Final. Games 3, 4, and 5 come home to Wheeling in West Banco Arena, starting with Game 3 on Tuesday. Reporting in Toledo with the Wheeling Nailers, I'm Jack Hillgrove for News 9 Sports. The Nailers, of course, would love and need that support inside West Banco Arena Tuesday night, but if you can't make it there, you can watch it live again locally on MeTV, Ohio Valley. Penguins hosting the Rangers, series tied at one, and what a start for the Pens. Evan Rodriguez with two first-period goals. It was 4-1 to one after one. Second period, though, all Rangers. Two goals already in. Chris Letang turns the puck over, and now a shorthanded goal for Andrew Kopp. It's 4-4 four to four after two. Midway through the third, the Pens would regain the lead. Huge goal for Danton Heinen. 5-4, they had two empty netters and win. 7-4, lead the series now two games to one. Pirates drop game one of a doubleheader to the Reds in game two here. Jack Sawinski robs Colin Moran of a potential game-tying home run. Meanwhile, the Bucks hit four home runs. They go on to win this one by 8-5. Final. Tomorrow morning, 11.30 on NBC and WTOV9, there's Major League Baseball on the air. Chicago and Boston will square off. OVAC track and field champions crowned today at St. Clairsville. Some records did fall, including Belair's Colt Seacrest, who bested his own Ohio Valley discus mark by tossing it 184 feet 7 inches. Seacrest also the Class 3A champ in the shot put, third overall behind Union Local's Johnny Sabinski, the 4A champ, and Toronto's Josh Fancher. Fancher, the 1A, 2A, and overall shot put champion. 57 feet, one and a half inches, the winning throw. Check out the finish in the 4 by 8 boys. St. Clairsville's Gannon Kazmersky looking to hold off Morgantown. Gets just across the finish line first. Red Devils edge out Morgantown there. Student Mills, Inky Jones, a stadium and OVAC championship record in the 400, 49.46 seconds. He was also on the victorious 4x4 relay, which included Josh Schoonover and the two guys who went 1-2 in the 300 hurdles. Winner Micah Mitchell and runner-up Xavier Falks. Big red tie with Morgantown for the 5A championship. And Wyatt Ryman, one of the winners for Shadyside, who wins the 1A, 2A team championship, along with Mason Van Nest in the 200. Moving on now to the girls' side. In the field, Caldwell freshman Gwen Lorai wins the overall discus title, 120 feet, 9 inches. Studentville's 4x2 relay of Maya Stackhouse, Madeline Chris, Isabella Yetz, and Sabria Jones won the 4x2. Jones also won the overall long jump today. Oakland had a double winner. Sophomore Cammie Ward wins the overall 400 and the 200. And another double overall winner, Student Catholic Central's Clara Simington. She won the 100 and the 300 hurdles. The Crusaders with the 1A, 2A team champs. St. Clairsville won 4A. And the Kentucky Derby, what an upset we saw on WTOV9. Rich Strike, 80 to 1 odds to win. Wasn't even in the field on Friday. Gets the win in the Kentucky Derby.